Hello everyone. Today is part 16 of our core knowledge studies. The first part, we dug a hole and buried the theory of evolution somewhere. We don't know, can't say, or did we? I don't want to say that I did. Let's just say evolution theory died. All right, first part. Second part through now, we are talking about Genesis and the beginning. We are all the way through the flood and we talked about the flood drying up and Noah sending out a dove and a raven. First sending out a raven and then a dove he had to send out and the dove brought back an olive branch. So they are now completely landed and they are on dry land. So we will continue at chapter 8 verse 15. Then God said to Noah, Go out from the ark, you and your wife, and your sons, and your sons' wives with you. Mind you, they've been, they've been on that boat for about half a year now. Bring out with you every living thing that is with you, of all flesh, birds, and animals, and creeping thing that creeps on the earth, that they may swarm on the earth, and be fruitful and multiply on the earth. Look at this little clip of me flying around flight sim where we think the the ark fossilization seems to have taken place in mount ararat gives you a good idea of what they may have seen and they stepped off that ark it had to be a very traumatic event and they had to be so happy to have survived through it so noah went out and his sons and his wife and his son's wives with him. Every beast, every creeping thing, and every bird, everything that moves on the earth, went out by families from the ark. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord. Noah was thankful. He was so thankful. When, whenever we pray for something, and it comes to pass, and the Lord takes care of us in a dire need, we need to be thankful and say thank you lord for what you have done so noah built an altar to the lord and took some of every clean animal and some of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar and when the lord smelled the pleasing aroma the lord said in his heart i will never again curse the ground because of man for the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth Neither will I ever strike down every living creature as I have done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, shall not cease. So, the Lord made a promise right there. He's never going to completely wipe out man and all the animals down to a less than 1% anymore. And he, he explains that man's heart is evil from the youth. Yes, we are. We are. We're always bucking. Bucking and trying to rebel. That is, that is our heart from youth. And chapter 9 verse 1 continues. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. So that means every single person on the earth is related to Noah. We are all related to Noah because, of course, his sons are related to Noah. So all the offspring from hence on out, not only will all relate to Adam, are related to Noah. The fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth and upon every bird of the heavens, upon everything that creeps on the ground, and all the fish of the sea, and to your hand they are delivered. Do you ever notice the animals, when they see man, they scatter. They book it like it's no one's business. Very few animals will step to man. And even them are afraid of this. Especially in modern times with, with some of our weaponry. But they've always been this way ever since the Lord has put this fear in their heart. Every moving thing that lives shall be food for you. So the Lord says, that we may now eat of every living thing. And as I gave you the green plants, I give you everything. So here is the point where we are now allowed to eat and eat. But you shall not eat flesh with its life, that is its blood. 
and for your lifeblood I will require a reckoning. From every beast I will require it, and from man. So we're not to eat things that are alive, eat it while they are living like some animals do. We're first to cook it and, and, and kill it. That is what God says. And he also says, and for your lifeblood I will require reckoning. Murder, every murder requires a reckoning. From every beast I will require it, and from man. So the, the beast as well. When you just slay people, innocent people, and when beasts slay innocent, the Lord requires a reckoning. And if they, the reckoning doesn't happen immediately, the Lord will avenge. From his fellow man, I will require a reckoning for the life of man. Whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall his blood be shed. For God made man in his own image. Out of the image of God, he made us. So he, he hates it when, when people are, are dying. He hates when innocent blood has been spilled. That is why certain things, certain policies that kill youth, babies in the womb, is so hard. It is so hard. I don't know how many people realize how detrimental they are to God's kingdom when they do that. It is a horrible sin. Please repent if you're one of those. Please repent if you're one of those that even support such a notion. It's not a political action. It's called murder. God said from he knew us before we were knit together in the womb. And that's on some more topics. That's not the point of this, but keep that in mind. And you be fruitful and multiply. Increase greatly on the earth. And multiply in it. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, Behold, I establish my covenant with you and your offspring. Remember, we just talked about the Lord's promises. And here is another promise that he is going to make to Noah and his offspring. And your offspring after you. And with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the livestock, and every beast of the earth with you. As many as came out of the ark. It is for every beast of the earth. I establish my covenant with you. That never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood. And never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. No more floods. And God said. And here is the sign. This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the cloud and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. The rainbow is the sign. Remember what I said earlier about how even amber showed that the oxygen level was different pre-flood? How there used to be a mist in the ground and layers of the, of the atmosphere were different. There wasn't a rainbow until the atmosphere changed. The thickness of the sky or the mist, whatever it is, the reflection of light. The Lord never had this be seen until after. And he explains it to him. I have set my bow in the cloud. And it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all of all flesh that is on the earth i will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between god and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth god said to noah this is the sign of the covenant that i've established between me and all flesh that is on the earth the rainbow is the sign of all the lord's covenant now, I think it's always interesting. I know that 
scientists gave the, the, the colors spectrum seven, seven colors, Roy G. Bibb, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And those are seven colors, kind of like the Lord's completeness in the seven days of the week. But what has mankind lately, within a hundred years, used as a symbol to represent homosexuality and the various cultures in that spectrum? The rainbow. The rainbow. I do not have to say much on this besides read the word. New Testament. The New Testament says, 1 Corinthians 6, 9, Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. I will not say much on that besides look at verse of the day 26, 123, and 133 to get a whole picture. The sum of the word of God is true. And I will also remind you that Yeshua said, Do not think that I came to abolish the law. I came so that the law might be fulfilled through me. I talk about people falling away and I talk about people being stuck in their sin, resting in their sin, saying, this is what I'm going to do. This is how God made me. This is what I'm going to do. I will not change. Accept me or get up. Look up those verses today. I also remind you, Though it will not be destroyed by flood, waters, the earth. Those that choose to do things such as killing and murder and rape and the sexual immorality. Second Peter 3, 7 says, But by the same word, the heavens and earth that now exist are stored up for fire not water, but fire, being kept until the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. So it won't be water next time. The ungodly, this time it's just going to be not such a high percentage. Those that choose to say, no, I hate you, God. I don't want to be part of your statutes. I want to do things my way. Let everybody have their own way. There are no absolute truths to this world. I don't care how you designed it. Fire will be set for the ungodly in their way. I remind you of that. And when you see some of these parades that, that talk about how the LGBTQ is all about love and things, also notice what the biggest thing they push is pride. 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 Happy pride. Happy pride. James 4 6 says, But he gives more grace, therefore it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Why do you think pride, being proud, is their mantra? Look up verse of the day number 38, talking about haughty eyes and a proud heart. Yes. So we will continue tomorrow. But remember the rainbow is to remind us that there is light at the end of the tunnel. No matter what the enemy may try to steal and use and corrupt, the rainbow is still beautiful because God made the rainbow and no one can ever take it. No one can ever take it away. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. May many be saved. 
May we, may we come to know you, Lord. May we choose you because you love us. And may we listen and heed to the warnings. May we heed to the warnings. And not sugarcoat or change anything to fit our own desires. For in the end times, man will well, elect teachers that will, te that will fulfill their myths and desires. And Lord, we don't want teachers like that. We want teachers of the truth. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Goodbye.